Howdy, it's Kyle talking about Detroit. In this video, I'll be going over various aspects of the geography of the city. I'll be talking about various neighborhoods. I'll be going over gentrification that's been happening in the city recently. I'll be talking about some of the urban structure of the city and just the overall layout of the city. I'll be talking about the suburbs, its border with Canada, and just overall what makes the city tick. I've been visiting Detroit at least once or twice a year since 1998 and it's one of the cities in the US that I'm the most familiar with, so this video is kind of like an outsider's view of a city that I know a lot about. The population of Detroit is just under 670,000 people and it continues to decline. Wayne County, in which it's located, is the most populous county in Michigan and there are just over 1.7 million people in that. The suburban county to the northwest is called Oakland County, it has about 1,260,000 people. And the suburban county to the northeast is called Macomb County with about 877,000 people. So most of the population growth in suburban Detroit has been to the northwest and northeast. There has been some growth to the west, but to the south has been less growth. Monroe County, the county just south of Wayne County, has only 150,000 people. The overall metro area has about 4.6 million people, and it ranks in between about 12th and 15th, depending on how you define the metro areas. The Central Business District, or CBD, is the part of town with the high-rises, sits right along the Detroit River, which is the international border with Canada. And so just across the river is the city of Windsor, Ontario. There are a lot of people that commute back and forth between Detroit and Windsor. There's a tunnel that goes underneath the river, and there's also a bridge that goes over it. For the longest time, the only bridge to cross the river was a privately owned bridge by this one guy, but finally they're building a new bridge so you can actually cross into Canada without using a private bridge. In the time that I've been visiting Detroit, the heart of downtown has always been okay. It's never been completely run down like much of the rest of the city. This part of town is where you have the Tigers baseball stadium, the Lions football stadium, and the relatively new arena, which is home to the Red Wings hockey team and the Pistons basketball team. So all four major sports are right in the heart of downtown. The new arena has really helped out downtown because before that, the main arena was way out in the suburbs in Auburn Hill. So all the basketball games, all of the biggest concerts were going on way out in the suburbs. And almost every night of the year, there's an event downtown that brings in at least 10,000 people or so. So there's always a good amount of activity going on in the heart of downtown. And as a result, a lot more restaurant and shop owners are willing to locate downtown, being that there will be a large crowd down there almost every night. Before the new arena, there were quite a few nights where there really wasn't much going on downtown. The main entertainment and nightlife district downtown is called Greek Town. And this is an old Greek immigrant neighborhood with a lot of great restaurants and shops and bars. However, admittedly, for a city the size of Detroit, it's kind of an underwhelming entertainment district. It feels like the kind of district you might have in a much smaller city. But there's a lot of great food in the area. If you're into Greek restaurants, there are several good ones. There's a really good place for Detroit-style deep dish pizza and a world-famous bakery that deserves all the praise it gets. We always stop there to get cookies or some kind of sweet when we're walking by there. As you head east or northeast from downtown along the river, you get to the Jefferson Avenue Corridor. This area has always been okay. There's been some apartments and high-rise condos there, and it was kind of like the heart of downtown. It's never been completely run down. And so this area along the riverfront fades into the Gross Points, which is a series of separate cities that are suburbs that are all very affluent. And I think that's part of why the city of Detroit has struggled so much. Most other cities have the old money, the old mansion part of town as part of the city. So that property tax revenue is going into the city. In Detroit, all the big mansions and old money are outside of the city limits. To the southwest of downtown is an area called Corktown. And this is the oldest neighborhood in the city. And this area was pretty run down for the longest time, but about 20 years ago, this started to be the first area of gentrification in the city. So this area has been fixed up quite a bit since undergoing gentrification, and the houses there are pretty expensive, especially considering how small most of them are. But the neighborhood now is much more walkable after being kind of sketchy for a while, and there's some pretty good restaurants and shops in the area as well. To the southwest of that is an area called Mexican Town. And as you can imagine, it's named that because there was a large influx of immigrants from Mexico in the early 20th century. And even to this day, there's a large Mexican population in the neighborhood. A lot of great restaurants there, good bakery, great spot to get some authentic tamales. It sits directly adjacent to Corktown, but because there's been so much gentrification in that neighborhood, it's starting to spill over into Mexican Town. So I've been starting to see some new restaurants and shops going up in the area that aren't really tied to the Mexican heritage. And some of the houses are being fixed up, so the area's been slowly going gentrification as well. The main part of the city that's been undergoing gentrification is called Midtown. The main thoroughfare through the area is called Woodward, which radiates from the heart of downtown out to the suburbs. 
So along this corridor is where you have the Detroit Institute of Arts, which is one of the best art museums in the country as well as other museums. And at the north end of Midtown is the campus of Wayne State University. So for the longest time, the area around here was okay. The area right around Wayne State was kind of holding on because you have this little bit of a student vibe there. But this is the part of town where you can see the most gentrification. There's a lot of new shops going up, a lot of boutique kind of stuff, little restaurants and cafes. And you can drive from the heart of downtown to Wayne State University along Woodward and not go through any area that's kind of sketchy. And that might not seem like a big deal for most cities, but that is a big deal for Detroit to have that much of an area where you can just go continuously without having to go through some serious urban blight. So this is the part of town where you'll see the most people fixing up old homes that have been dilapidated or abandoned for many years. And that's when you might start seeing some of the folks that live in this part of town have to move somewhere else as the rent and house prices just continue to go up in this part of town. One of the most interesting parts of town is an enclave called Hamtramck. And this is an independent city completely surrounded by city limits of Detroit. Historically, it was kind of a working class company town associated with the GM Hamtramck assembly plant right there. Most of the folks that lived there were of Polish descent. And even to this day, you can go around town. There's a lot of signs in Polish and the big Polish Catholic church there as well. Over the past 20 years, many of the older Polish folks have died, and there really isn't that much of a large Polish population in the town anymore. After the Polish population went down, there was a large influx of Arabs and other people from the Middle East to move in. So when you walk around today, you'll see it's mostly Arab. A lot of the signs are in Arabic, some Arabic restaurants there. It's very common to see women wearing hijab or full burqa. A suburb directly adjacent to Detroit to the west is called Dearborn, and this is the largest population of Arab Americans in the country. For the most part, it's a middle class suburb, pretty nice place, but Hamtramck almost seems like the, the poor part of Dearborn, even though it's not directly adjacent to it. So even though Hamtramck isn't the poorest or most dangerous part of the city, it is still pretty poor and a lot poorer than Dearborn. Just west of Hamtramck and just east of the gentrified area of Midtown is Arden Park. And this is a part of town with some old stately mansions. And as far as I know, this part of town never went into complete decay. It was always at least pretty nice. But it's a very small area. It's only a handful of blocks. And even though it's very nice, for the longest time, it was completely surrounded by kind of derelict and abandoned areas and just a lot of urban blight. However, there's been a lot more infill in this part of the city. So as things are starting to connect Hamtramck to Arden Park to Midtown, you're starting to see almost like one continuous area where it's, everything is pretty okay. Before, the nice areas were so small, you really couldn't walk very far before you stumbled into somewhere you really didn't want to be. And again, this might not seem like a big deal for most other cities, but this is a big deal for Detroit. So there's all kinds of wonderful things going on in Detroit. There's a brand new bridge connecting it to Canada. There's a brand new skyscraper going up right in the heart of downtown. Some of the historic areas have been fixed up. Some of the older masses have been fixed up. Some of the abandoned and blighted areas have been gentrified. So things are going fantastic in Detroit, aren't they? Well, it's improved, but it is still Detroit. And so even though there has been a lot of improvements in many parts of the town, much of the town is still very blighted. Once you get west of Midtown, it starts to get really rough, and you're going to see some serious urban blight. And the urban blight in Detroit is some of the worst urban blight you're going to see in the entire country. If you want to see just how bad it can get in Detroit, the south end of town is called Del Rey. This is just mostly empty. It's almost like an urban ghost town. It's kind of separate from most of the rest of the city, so it's almost been forgotten. And in terms of what might be the worst part of town where people actually live would be the area between Seven Mile Road and Eight Mile Road in the eastern half of the city. And this is where you'll see some of the largest amounts of urban poverty in the U.S. This part of town is really poor, has very high crime, and it's just really depressing to see the state of many of the homes in the area. So there's always going to be a really poor urban blight part of Detroit, no matter what you do, no matter how much gentrification you have, there's always going to be a part of town that remains poor and high crime. So even though Detroit is probably the number one city in the country for the percentage of that city being urban blight, it is improving. But because it was so far behind to start with, a lot of progress, but still a long way to go. You may have heard about the mile roads that Detroit metro area uses. Every mile, there's a major east-west thoroughfare that goes by a mile number name. So Zero Mile is the heart of downtown, although they don't really start having the mile number names till about Six Mile, and in the city of Detroit, it's really about Seven Mile. The most well-known one is Eight Mile Road, and this is the one that separates the city of Detroit from the suburbs. Eight Mile Road is well-known for being a street with a bunch of sleazy bars and strip joints and all kinds of liquor stores and just stuff like that that's right along the border of the city of Detroit because that suburban city right next to it might not have allowed that stuff. 
So the mile road numbers continue to get higher as you go north and the metro Detroit area extends to about the 30 mile road area. Once you get past that it's mostly rural areas and farms. And most people in the northern suburbs will describe where they're from by saying the mile road and the cross street. So for example you might live near 16 in Grosbeck. And we have friends out near 19 in Garfield. But just know that anything higher than 8 mile is not in the city of Detroit. So those were the main aspects of the geography of Detroit that I wanted to talk about, but now I want to talk about some of the food and other cultural aspects. So as I had mentioned, a lot of great ethnic cuisine with Arab and other Middle Eastern areas and Greek food as well. But a couple of iconic Detroit foods are deep dish pizza and conies. To me, Detroit deep dish pizza is my favorite style of pizza. It's that perfect Goldilocks between the ultra thin New York style and the really thick Chicago style that's more like a lasagna. I like the square pizza that gives like a really crunchy crust. Another Detroit staple are Coney Dogs. And you'll see these places popped up all over town. Through all my times visiting there, I've eaten probably all the major Coney places, but I had them all kind of back to back to back this time. And my favorite after eating it a bunch is called Apollo Coney's in the northwestern suburb of Sterling Heights. Kind of an interesting tidbit is that hot dogs in Detroit are often called Coney's, like Coney Island, New York. And hot dogs in upstate New York are often called Michigans. Something else I've noticed has to do with food and restaurants up there is that the people in restaurants are brutal to wait staff if they drop something. So if a waiter or a waitress drops a cup or a plate, a lot of times people in the restaurant will yell, Ah, you suck, job opening. They can be pretty brutal to the person. It's also kind of funny too. And I haven't really noticed that happening really anywhere else except for Detroit area. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about is just the music scene. There's so many live clubs, so many different genres of music, there's so many musicians in the city. And it's not just downtown where you have a cluster of clubs or the suburb of Royal Oak where you have a lot of bars and clubs too. There's just music venues all throughout the metro area, maybe on this random corner in a suburb or just on this side street. And even if you're way out in the suburbs, like some of the 15 to 20 mile road areas, you still have a lot of live music clubs. You just really don't see that many live music venues in the suburbs of other major cities like you do in Detroit. So cities attracting high salary, high tech type workers doesn't always work well for the people that currently live in those poorer parts of the city. And so I think a really smart way for Detroit to gentrify would be to attract musicians to the city. Musicians are for the most part pretty poor. They're not coming to your town with a six figure bank account looking up to buy stuff. They'd be more interested in buying one of those old beat up houses because that's all they can afford. So by attracting musicians, you can get people to move into some of these older dilapidated properties and pay rent or maybe even pay a mortgage, but they're not rich people because most musicians kind of struggle. So I would love to see somebody run for mayor of Detroit with that being their platform, get a bunch of musicians to move there, gentrify the city without pricing out the locals. So that's my overview of Detroit. It's a city that's often misunderstood. Normally you'll only hear negative things about it. And even though it has a long way to go, it has made some very positive strides in the past decade. So I do look forward to seeing Detroit continue to improve in the coming years. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve. And subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about U.S. geography. I'm talking about cities and counties and states and ranking them and comparing them in all kinds of different categories talking about cross-country road tripping and other kind of travel stuff and everything I talk about comes from a little more nerdy type perspective but yeah thanks for watching Geography King signing out